Hi everyone and welcome to The Crow Show brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. I'm Mark Bickley. And I'm Alana Smith. Each week we take you behind the scenes to meet the players and coaches as they strive for final success in 2017. Coming up in today's show, the early fan favourite for club champion. And everyone talks about contested footy, so what is it exactly? The first one here is obviously a stoppage. Um, Hugh Greenwood's obviously under a fair bit of pressure in, in, in and around the stoppage. But first, the AFL appears to be in great shape. That's if you take into account record memberships, record crowds and historically high revenues. But according to the Bureau of Statistics, Australians are nearly three times more likely to play soccer than football. So should administrators be concerned? And what's being done to improve numbers? Junior footy clinics are always well attended and as a result South Australia is bucking the national trend when it comes to Aussie rules versus soccer. We stand alone as um, football being the number one sport in the state of South Australia so that's significant. It speaks um, to, the, to the work of our club network, we've got 248 clubs across the state um, promoting our game and that's really important. Adam Kelly believes football's biggest threat is not posed by other sports but rather society's attitudes towards physical activity and exercise. Um, it's obviously a lot more challenging to have somebody who's not active come into the sport of Australian rules. Kelly also recognises the changing face of Australia. We now have almost 50% of our state were born overseas or have at least one parent born overseas and our fastest growing migrant communities coming from India and China um, and not au fait with the game of Australian rules. The Sandfall is working closely with the AFL and the Crows to ensure the game continues to grow. AFL clubs certainly provide that vehicle in attracting people to the game. It's the community clubs who then nurture that passion and interest in the game, get people involved, give, give them the opportunity to participate and our sample clubs to give the um, development opportunities for those who want to pursue a, a, a talent pathway. A record number of schools will also benefit from the Crows flagship community program this year. Growing with gratitude teaches children the benefits of making positive choices and living a healthy Lifestyle. We'll see over probably 50,000 um, kids um, throughout the year. That's not only with our school program, that's with female participation, multicultural programs, and also our player engagement throughout the communities with the CBA agreement across Oskick, school footy, club footy. Um, you know, we're heavily engaged in the community. After soccer, golf is the second most popular club sport, followed by football. Now, we hear all the time from coaches and commentators that whoever wins the contested ball wins the game. But exactly what does that mean? What counts as contested footy and which stats are relevant? Walker, Merritt was the only man there. Sloan coming through. Kevill one way, Sloan the other. What a contest that was. So it's ground ball, which is a combination of hard ball and loose ball. So hard ball's right in amongst the contest, sort of around a stoppage scenario. A loose ball is when there's less pressure on, but in a loose loose ball situation uh, and obviously contested mark is pretty self-explanatory in terms of uh, say a, a Josh Jenkins or a Taylor Walker competing against two defenders and they mark it so they're the main key ones along with tackling as well so tackling or effective tackles is part of contested possession. The first one here is obviously a stoppage. Um, Hugh Greenwood's obviously under a fair bit of pressure in, in, in and around the stoppage. So when he takes that ground ball there, that'll be a ground ball, a hard ball uh, in that contested bracket. And then Riley Knight, that'll be an effective tackle, so that'll be part of um, the tackling side of it. And then Hugh's second effort again on this ground ball will be classed as a hard ball get um, as part of that play there. So there, there's two examples of a ground ball, hard ball scenario. Uh, and probably an effective tackle in that area there. Didn't get enough depth with the kick, now he has. Jenkins takes on Brown. Rory Atkins' quick kick from stoppage. Tex has obviously read the cues that's going to drop. That would arguably be a contested mark because his direct opponent's right on him. And then you see he turns face the game, kicks it to space to Josh, who doesn't mark it, but then it's good enough to win that loose ball. So the other one you would have seen with Hugh Greenwood was more of a hard ball in a contest. This one's more open field where JJ wins a loose ball against his direct opponent. Yeah, well, we value the contest um, 
really important. Um, it's one of our pillars in terms of how we want to play. Um, we rate it really highly, um, probably the highest thing because that's where it, whether your offence or your defence comes into play. Um, and obviously it's talked about you know, a lot through the AFL in terms of what it looks like and, and how it's valued throughout the competition. He decides to go in the Jenkins way and he did well with the bodywork with Carlisle. The beautiful kick. The only stat that really matters though is what the scoreboard says. When Alana returns after the break, are we getting closer to umpiring's biggest change in 25 years? And a former player uncorks some vintage memories. Back in 1993, the AFL decided to increase the number of field umpires at each game from two to three. Now, for the third year in a row, they're trialling four umpires to assess the impact on the game. With fewer matches being played during the bye rounds, there are more umpires available to run the trial. So, what's been the effect so far of the extra set of eyes? Ball thrown up right on the 54, field umpires in operation tonight. Look, I think there's three or four things. One is certainly decisional accuracy. If this makes umpires' jobs easier and better decision making, we'll look at it. If it means that umpires can do more than one game a match and we can have the better umpires umpiring more often, that's compelling. And I think thirdly, to make sure that you know the cost to the industry is is uh, is worthwhile insofar as output from umpires, longevity for their careers, uh, and in the end, better umpiring across the board. One of the, the major parts of the trial is to have uh, some umpires do more than one game in a round, and there was. The Last round there was five umpires that did double ups. A big part of the uh, review is to see how those umpires cope with that load you know, mentally and physically. I'm not sure we've had any compelling results as yet and certainly in previous years there was uh, about the same amount of free kicks paid. Uh, the feedback from the umpires, there's certainly better support and communication now on ground. Long ball in from Sheed, free kick, preps, no. That's a classic case of the two umpires getting confused about whose decision it was again. Have a look at the umpire to the boundary line. Now, Matt Stevick, now he says a hold. The umpire right there in charge, he deemed it no free kick. Yeah, there's certainly some quite reasonable feedback that there are more bodies on the ground, so more likelihood of being in the corridor or spaces that the players would like to occupy. So that, that's fair feedback. I'm not sure there's anything uh, absolutely compelling that that's the case, but that's one of the dynamics we have to look at and make sure that uh, if we do decide to go with it, um, that's not a problem. An AFL field umpire usually covers between 10 and 15 kilometres each game. Now, young Miles Paholke has still to make his AFL debut, but I doubt if a lack of seniority or experience will save him when it comes to being on the receiving end of a one minute grilling from Brodie Smith. So let's find out how he copes, thanks to Revolution Roofing. Welcome to the Victory Veranda Hot Seat. This week we're joined by Miles the Hulk Baholke. Hulk, where were you born? Um, I was born in Maui, out in Gippsland in Victoria. AFL club, growing up as a kid, and favourite player? Um, I went to Port Adelaide, and my favourite player was Chad Corns. Interesting. So where's the Port Adelaide come from, being a Victorian? Um, I think I just like their jersey growing up. Which teammate's most likely to take a selfie? I reckon your best little buddy could be this one. Yeah, Jordan Gallucci takes a fair few selfies. <laughs> if you could be a professional any other sport in the world? A surfer. Travel the world. Go to the best beaches. Fair enough. Do a bit of surfing? No. <laughs> <laughs> Bright or black boots? Socks up or down? Um, I've worn both. I've worn bright and black. I'm wearing bright at the moment and I'm a mid-range yep. sort of character. First year at the club, the best and worst part of being an AFL footballer so far? I um, found out pretty early that pre-season hurts. Yep. Best part is probably that Thursday you get off during pre-season. <laughs> <laughs> and what did you do with your Thursdays and pre sleep all day? Yeah, sleep all day. <laughs> <laughs> and have you learned to cook yet? No. Cooking with Huey? I've cooked for myself about three times. I don't think I've cooked for Huey yeah, yet. Does Huey cook? <laughs> yeah, Huey cooks. Is, is he any good or is he um, chance to throw he's got about, here? He's got about four different dishes that he does and he just rotates them weekly. Yeah, any good or? Yeah, not too bad. Well, thanks for joining us, Hulk. <laughs> no worries, mate. <laughs> 
of time for him to get used to Smithers. Now, when the Crows finalised their inaugural squad of 52 players in 1991, only seven had experience in what was then the VFL. One of them was Bruce Lindner, who'd played the previous five seasons for Geelong. In this segment, Flying the Nest, brought to you by Flight Centre, we catch up with Bruce, who has great memories of those crazy early days. A long kick into the forward line, off hands to Lindner, on his day, Bruce Lindner could turn a game as a high-marking, long-kicking forward. So Lindner from 50. Long drop punt. There's another one. After debuting with West Adelaide in 1980, he crossed the border and played 66 games with Geelong before returning to Adelaide as a member of the inaugural Crow squad. No doubt. I mean, that was... Uh exciting times back then it was not, not that it's not now it's exciting times now but this was the start of a new beginning we were the hottest property in town at that stage he vividly recalls the hype about the crows first days the intense media coverage huge crowds and even the enormous traffic jams we had to get there two or three hours before the game just so we could uh, you know get our timings right for our meeting and make sure we got there. Lindner had bitter memories of being in Geelong's 1989 grand final side that lost to Hawthorne and knew what the Crows were in for. So playing the first game against them was uh, going to be a challenge. We didn't know how well we were going to play but on the night everything clicked. He was one of three players who kicked four goals that night as the Crows stormed to an 86 point win. We played some really good football. It was fast, quick flowing movement and uh, it made the uh, the rest of the AFL sit up and go, well these guys, they might be pretty good. Lindner played just another 18 games for the Crows before retiring. He then had to think about life after football. I went back to uh, university at Adelaide University and did a, a wine marketing degree, uh, which is a three year degree, so, um, and that was a lot of fun as a mature age student. Now, when he's not working for Options Wines, you'll find him on the golf course or fishing. So, does he have any regrets about his AFL career? I'm envious of um, those players that have won a premiership medal though, really envious of that. At least Bruce did enjoy Premiership success with West Adelaide in 1983. Stay with us, still to come on The Crow Show, evidence of the club's depth. This young man still has to come back. And Eddie Hocking takes us off the beaten track. The number 11 Guernsey has been missing from the Crows lineup all year. It belongs, of course, to Paul Seedsman, who's become almost the forgotten man due to persistent groin injuries. At times, the senior side could have done with his run and penetrating kick, so it's encouraging to see him back playing in the sandful. He just waited for the run of Seedsman, drew it to him inside his steps, fires on goal, and the finish is a good one. While we're over the, over the break, I had issues with the left side of my hip and um, rehabbed that for the first few months and then got to about March and the right side decided to play up, um, which was probably more frustrating seeing as I was so close to getting back to playing. Um, that took another couple of months, but um, finally got there and, and got back out on the park last week against Norwood and, and loved being back out there. Back once more to Seedsman. Well, we know what he did a few moments ago. He's made Each day you're sort of going out there wondering whether you're going to, you know, where you're going to be at. You know, some days you go out there feeling great, other days it feels sore and you feel like you've done exactly the same thing except you're getting different sort of results. So um, it is as much of a mental battle as it is physical. Um, there's no doubt you struggle at times, um, but you just got to try and take the little wins. Um, and, it's, you know, it sounds very cliche, but every day you sort of look for a couple of positive things that went right and, you know, try and stay above the line as such in terms of the positive mindset. Oh, they're just spanking them left, right and centre. Seedsman adds another one. We're going to have to spend a, a few weeks in the sample getting uh, 
some game time in and some match fitness, but uh, yeah, definitely got um, my, my sights on getting back in the AFL team ASAP. Um, when that'll be, I'm not too sure. I'll just wait for the tap on the shoulder from the coach. Seedsman could go all the way home. Sinks the slipper, and that's out of here. Certainly a terrific player waiting to make his AFL return. Experienced senior players like Seeds are used to following a strict diet. But how difficult is it to get the message through to younger players when they join the club? That's the job of Crows dietitian Bree Salagaris as she explains for Thomas Farms. Most of the education we give our players uh, is with our one to three years. Often by the time they've been at the club for about three years, they're pretty switched on as to what their needs are and what they should be doing for performance. All of our first years, when they first come to the club, all have different levels of um, education and previous experience with food and cooking for themselves. Uh, so it's my job to teach them, firstly, how to cook, what things are appropriate to be eating, um, all about game day nutrition. What else do we do? We do cooking sessions, we do education on protein and carbohydrates. So often um, we'll recommend to the boys that they do something like Thomas Farms because it's excellent for organisation. So when they don't have time to go to the shops and get all those ingredients, they can order the Thomas Farms foods online, come to their house, and then all they have to do is cook it out. Certainly a lot stricter than it was back in my youth. Well, we've already seen that Matthew Robin is well off the pace in our Toyota Hilux Challenge. So, is he going to be a help or a hindrance as a backseat driver when Eddie Hocking gets behind the wheel? Let's go along for the ride and find out as they tackle a special course just outside Adelaide. Sweat off my, my forehead. <laughs> Definitely a bit nervous, yeah. I had to wipe the, uh, the uh, brow up a bit with the sweat, but uh, now I've certainly got over that pretty quickly. Sometimes I get a bit excited when I get too much acceleration. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I drive a, uh, V8. <laughs> the uh, car handled itself pretty well and uh, I thought um, you know, I controlled the vehicle. Well, I like that. Yeah, yeah. Like that. <laughs> yeah, see, I told you. You better oh. send me through to the tell you. <laughs> the terrain uh, is a bit scary. Um, some points uh, going up uh, the hill behind us uh, can be basically looking into the sky. So we've got the tray table in the other yeah. position. Yeah. <laughs> hey, that, was, that was fantastic. That was excellent. Good time awesome. I reckon the time, I think. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, you needed someone else to spur you along. I suppose the best we can say is that at least you weren't slower than Matty Robran. I tell you what, some of these former players have certainly lost their pace. Stay with us. We're joining Crows supporters to find our face in the crowd and ask them who's been the best player so far this year. Welcome back. Now, as we take a look at a couple of highlights from social media, it's worth noting that our three sites, Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, are the fastest growing platforms in the AFL. Our Twitter following, for example, is the largest in Australian club sport. If you haven't already done so, make sure you jump on board. OK, first up, has there been a better goal celebration this year? I don't think so. And how good was it to see Leighton Hewitt supporting the big freeze at the G? Good on him. Now, halfway through the season, fans have their own thoughts on who should be leading in the Crows' best and fairest count. One name in particular keeps coming up. Oh, Sloaney, easily, easily. He's the best uh, under under the pack, uh, hardened at the ball. Genuine, uh, genuine player, I reckon, in the league this say. Uh, Rory Laird. Yep, I reckon. It's either one of the Rory's, but I reckon it's going to be Laddy. Eddie Betts, he does magical things. Sloaney, without a doubt. Probably Rory Sloane. Well, I think Rory Sloane's been performing still fairly well. I think it's Rory Sloane, because <laughs> he's just had some nice. pretty great games this season. He's yeah. Been on the ball. <laughs> Of course, ultimately, it's the five coaches who will vote and decide who takes home the gold jacket. 
Now, time to look for our face in the crowd. Plenty to choose from again. Let's stop the camera on you. If you recognise yourself, contact the club before 5pm next Wednesday. Be ready with some photo ID and a merchandise pack will be yours. That just about wraps up our show for this week, brought to you by Chemist Warehouse. Now, don't forget, you can always see exclusive stories like those we've shown you today by visiting the club website, afc.com.au. Thanks for your company today, and we look forward to joining you again next Sunday at 11.30 on 7. Bye for now. We'll see you then.